Hello, and welcome to the lightning talk on what's new with not much. For starters, what is not much? Well, I call it a toolkit uh, for indexing and searching mail, but for me, it's also my daily uh, mail user agent. If we have a quick look at this diagram, there's a shared library called libnotmuch, um, which has a lot of various language bindings, and a command line program called notmuch, which uh, is able to emit JSON and S expressions, and that's what the Emacs interface talks to. There's also a few other clients, the most prominent being Asteroid, which is GTK-based, and Neomat, which is MUT, um, but with a the ability to have virtual folders using not much. The interface is thread based. You use a search normally via key binding, but here via an elisp. And for example, now I've just found all the threads. There's three of them which are written, well, have a message written by somebody named Flores and uh, contain CFFI in the subject. There's an alternate, more mutt-like interface called uh, not much tree, and it's possible to switch back and forth between these two views of the matching threads, and also to bop around between the messages in the thread, which actually match my query. Well, that's sort of the general uh, sort of overriding U UI idea is that you have threads, and you have within those threads certain messages which actually match your query, and you can easily navigate those. So, the talk promises what's new, and I mentioned a few of the things that we have done lately. There's been some improvements to searching. In particular, you can now search via uh, the so-called body prefix for things that occur only in the body. So here's two messages, the only two messages. Uh, Oh, wait, that, that one thread has three matching messages, and the other thread has one matching message. And these are messages that um, have emacs conf in the body, but not in the subject. Um, and that kind of searching is helpful when you are trying to find a, a message, and you only have a vague idea of what, what's in it. And then it turns out you need to get rid of all the matches that are in the subject, or from, or whatever. Another uh, long requested feature is the ability to index by list ID. Um, and so not just list ID, but any header can be turned into a not much search prefix just by using this config command, not much config command like this, um, and then re-indexing the appropriate part of the database. Here I'm only doing the last month to keep this uh, more or less bearable waiting time. For some reason, it's a bit slow to re-index uh, on my laptop compared to the desktop where I first ran through this talk. You can see it's spinning away there, but now we're done. And since, since we have now added the list colon prefix, we can do a corresponding search. Here's the mail, all the mail from the last month with the list ID not much. It's pretty quiet much on the quitting pretty quiet month on the not much mailing list. Uh, other changes that have happened lately. Daniel Can Gilmore has been doing a lot of work on uh, cryptography support, um, and you have uh, various options to trading off security and convenience. Despite Ben Franklin, it is sometimes reasonable to make some sort of trade-off there. Um, so in particular, you can, for example, leave the, the mails encrypted on the disk, but uh, store a decrypted uh, search index so you can search them fast. Um, it's also true that you know you probably want to have your full disk encryption or something if you're going to do something like that, because an adversary could reconstruct your mail given the index, but, you know, a sufficiently motivated and determined adversary. So as usual, these things depend on doing a threat assessment and figuring out what you need to defend against. Uh, maybe you're only worried about the mail in transit rather than on your disk. You consider your 
get secure, in which case this is a quite a convenient option. Another thing that is new is support for GZIP files. It's a bit experimental. Well, it's not so much experimental as not super well tested. This is the first release that's been in, and I don't use it a lot myself. But um, with the idea is that we have some file, this particular file, somebody's helpfully included uh, some images in it to explain the problem. And you saw there, there was a little bit of a pause to open it up, or if you didn't. Anyway, the point is there's two high resolution images attached to the message. That's not great, um, but well, we can uh, gzip that file. So now I can, well, let's just quick to the shell session. And in fact, um, in order to interact properly with Mailder, you probably want to be a little more careful about naming this. Um, so .gz is probably not going to work out great in terms of Mailder flags. But Anyway, that file's there now. You can see it has a .gz prefix. But if we go back to not much and we say, hey, show us that file, same thing. So it's transparently decrypting it and displaying it. And there's you know, a little bit of display, but it is 13 megs of data that it's schlepping back and forth between the disk and Emacs. So you know we can't really complain too much. Well, I guess we can't, but we'll improve our lives anyway. All right, so I think I have a couple minutes left. Um, also, my dog really wants to go for a walk, and she keeps poking me. Um, so, what's next? Well, there's definitely some improvements for the Emacs interface. We want to uh, improve the documentation, um, welcome people who know how to write RST or want to learn, or make more things asynchronous, like fetching GPG keys, um, and there's quite a few convenience features that we need working on. Actually, we probably could really use another eLisp expert because um, Dave Edmonds, who has been writing a lot of this stuff, has been pretty busy lately. Um, probably the most disruptive and also exciting change is we're going to wholesale replace the Python bindings um, with new bindings based on CFFI. If you're a Pythonista, you know what that means. Um, the big picture is that it will stop having memory problems with uh, Python after 3.6, which turned out to be sort of incompatible with the way that our old bindings worked. And it's all very well that we can currently read protected headers, but we also want to be able to write them. And I think there are probably quite a few other uh, improvements with respect to uh, nice support for cryptography, um, autocrypt, and all these very interesting projects going on. Um, and we're lucky to have uh, Daniel involved with the project, with the Not Much project, who's also interested in uh, a lot of these crypto ideas. So that's, I expect his uh, contributions to continue. <laughs> no pressure. Um, and that the cryptography support in not much will continue to improve. So um, I think I have about a minute left. So let me just uh, spend the last minute um, doing a bit more of a demo of not much. Uh, uh, like I mentioned, when you normally start it by firing up not much, I have, for example, a search for not much bugs. Um, we can look at how this thing is defined. <laughs> if I can remember this, the variable. So I'm here in the customize interface and you can um, see that I have a name and then I have a query which is a little bit complicated but that's you know, that's more about the peculiar way that I've organized my email. Okay, um, oops, <laughs> then I just broke my email setup. And now I'm going to stop.